midpoint and distance in the coordinate plane. Our objectives are to apply the formula for midpoint as well as use the distance formula and the Pythagorean theorem to find the distance between two points. Well, why learn this? You can use a coordinate plane to help calculate distances. Let's look at the midpoint formula. You can think of midpoint as average. You're just trying to find the average of your x's and the average of your y's. So the middle distance that's going left to right and your middle distance that's going up and down. And you're just doing it in the form of a coordinate so you have a place that you can plot the point. So the average of your x's, so add your two x's together and divide by two. The average of your y's, so add your two y's together and divide by two. Let's try a couple of examples. Let's look at this first one. Find the coordinates of the midpoint of CD with endpoint C is at negative 2, negative 1, and D is at 4, 2. All right, so we want to take the average of our x's, so we're going to add our x's together. So negative 2 plus 4 divided by 2, and then we have negative 1 plus 2 divided by 2, and then we can simply simplify. So negative 2 plus 4 is 2, so we have 2 divided by 2, negative 1 plus 2 is 1, so 1 divided by 2, and you can reduce your 2 over 2 to just simply 1. You can leave this as 1 half, or if you prefer, a decimal is okay, you can go with either 1. And if we were to plot that point, we've got 1, and then 0.5. And that would be our midpoint. Well, what happens if I give you the midpoint and I want to know one of the extremes? See if you can take the formula or use some different strategies to try and figure this one out. And then we'll do it together to see how close you came. Alright, now that you've had a moment to try this one on your own, let's try it together. I'm going to show you two different ways you can go about this. So, we'll call it method 01. And then we'll go with method 2. Alright, in method 1, you're utilizing that formula. Since 4, negative 3 is our midpoint, that should have been our end result after we added 2 points and divided by 2. So, for example, your x should have given you the outcome of 4 once you added your two x values together. Well, since we don't know what the other x value is, that's your variable. So to solve, we're going to multiply both sides by 2. So we have 8 equals 2 plus x, and then subtract 2. So we have x is 6. And then we can do the same thing for y. So that's negative 3 equals, and then you have 2 plus y divided by 2. Once again, this is your middle these are your two extremes. Just like in the previous example, you added your two extremes and divided by two, and it gave you your middle. You have to go this route because you have your middle already. So multiply both sides by two. We have negative six equals two plus y. Subtract two from both sides, and you end up with negative eight equals y. So your coordinate is six, negative eight. Well, let's look at method two. Well, how far did you travel to go from 2 to 4? So to go from 2 to 4, you went up 2. So that means to go to the next place, you've got to go up 2. So your x's will be 6. So we'll kind of mark this as the x's. And then we'll do this one as the y's. All right, so now let's look at our y's. We're going from 2 to negative 3. So from 2 to negative 3. Well, you've traveled down 5. So, we're going to go down 5 more, which brings us to negative 8. So our coordinate is 6, negative 8. Both methods will work, and there are others as well. You can choose which one you'd prefer. Let's look at the distance formula. In a coordinate plane, the distance d between two points x1, y1, and x2, y2, 
is the distance equals the square root of the quantity x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Let's try an example. Find AB and CD. Then determine if the two of them are congruent. Well, let's start with the distance of AB. Keep in mind, our distance formula is the square root x2 minus x1 squared plus the quantity y2 minus y1 squared, and all of that is under the square root. All right, so A is at 1, 2, 3, so we're at 0, 3, and B is at 5, 1. All right, so let's plug our stuff into our formula and go for it. So x2 minus x1, and then we're going to square that quantity, plus y1, or sorry, y2 minus y1, which is our 3, and then we're going to square that quantity, and then all of that is under the square root. Okay, 5 minus 0 is 5, 5 squared is 25, because we know that that's 5, and then we have 1 minus 3 is negative 2, negative 2 squared is 4, so we have the square root of 29. Okay, well let's look at CD. Alright, CD. So C is at negative 1, 1, and D is at 1, 2, 3. So negative 3, negative 4. So we have the square root of, so we've got x2 minus x1. So we've got negative 3 minus negative 1 squared plus negative 4 minus 1 squared. So negative 3 minus a negative is like saying adding a positive. So negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. And then we have negative 4 minus 1 is negative 5. So negative 2 squared is 4. And then negative 5 squared is 25. So we end up with the square root of 29. Well, they're both the square root of 29, so AB is in fact congruent to CD. Let's look at the Pythagorean theorem. You guys have probably heard about Pythagorean theorem in the past. However, it's really, 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 really important. Make sure when you do your a squared plus b squared equals c squared, your hypotenuse is always across from 90. It's the longest side in your right triangle. Okay? You can't make this a or b. a or b can switch back and forth. It doesn't matter because properties allow us to do that. However, c needs to stand alone. Your hypotenuse is your hypotenuse and nothing else. So we have a squared plus b squared equals your hypotenuse squared. Your hypotenuse is the one across from 90. Alright, let's try one. We have use the distance formula and the Pythagorean theorem to find the distance to the nearest tenth. Well, we're familiar with the distance formula, so let's start with that. And then if we get the same answer when we use Pythagorean theorem, we know we've done it right. So the distance formula from A to B so we have the square root equals the square root, and we've got x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. All right, so we've got 2 plus negative 2, so that's like saying 2 plus 2, which is 4. And then we have negative 2 minus 3, which is negative 
5. So we have 4 squared, which is 16. And we have 5 squared, which is 25. And that gets that ends up being the square root of 41. All right. So when we do our Pythagorean theorem, we want it to result in this. All right. So we have a squared. We need to know that distance. So you can, once you've drawn your triangle, so normally we just had this segment AB. To make it a triangle, you're just going to kind of go either left or right or up or down and form a triangle. Hint, follow the grid lines. They're there to help you. So then it becomes really easy to count. So you've got 1, 2, 3, 4 is for side A. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is for side B. All right, so our Pythagorean theorem states that we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So our a squared is 4 squared plus 5 squared equals our unknown c squared. So we have 16 plus 25 equals our c squared. And if we combine like terms here, we've got 16 and 25, which is 41 equaling c squared. And c is not by itself yet. We have, it's c squared, so we need to do the opposite of squaring something, which would be to take the square root. So we're going to take the square root of both sides. So c equals the square root of 41. And since it wanted it as a decimal to the nearest tenth, the square root of 41 is about 6.4. And that, folks, concludes our lesson on midpoint and distance in the coordinate plane.